For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, so we've already talked about how we can break down carbs for energy. Specifically, we talked about breaking down glucose via glycolysis. We've also talked about how we can break down fats or fatty acids specifically for energy via beta oxidation. But we can also break down proteins or amino acids specifically. Uh, we could break them down for energy, even though they're not exactly the go-to as far as uh, energy sources go. Okay. So when then though, under what conditions are amino acids oxidized to yield energy in humans and in other animals? Well, there are three potential situations. The first one being what's called normal protein turnover. Normal protein turnover. It's also called protein recycling. Protein recycling. And this is just the idea that proteins in our bodies are routinely being made and degraded. Some amino acids that result from that regular protein turnover might be catabolized for energy if they're not being used for the synthesis of other proteins. Okay, so that's one situation. Another situation is uh, during a high protein diet, a high protein diet. So this is just the idea that if someone is consuming more protein than their body needs for protein synthesis, they'll have an excess of amino acids. And that excess can be used for energy instead of being used to build proteins. So some might ask though, if there is this excess of amino acids, why not store them like we do for carbs and fats? And the answer is that amino acids cannot be stored. It's kind of weird, right? Carbs can be stored as glycogen and fatty acids we can store in triglycerides, but there isn't an equivalent for amino acids. There's no equivalent that's specifically made to store amino acids. Amino acids are stored, I guess you could say as as proteins, but that's not really being stored. They're being used for something. Um, so they, there isn't an actual just simple storage form for amino acids though. Okay. Uh, the third situation um, under which this, this uh, catabolism of amino acids can occur um, is during starvation conditions. Starvation. Okay. And why is that? Well, during starvation, carbohydrate and fat energy is not available. It's not available in high enough quantities. Um, or really at all. Um, and so the body begins to catabolize cellular protein and a lot of that protein that it catabolizes is coming from the muscles. And so um, proteins being broken down into amino acids, those amino acids are then being used for energy during starvation. Okay. So those are the three potential situations. Okay, so let's scroll down here. So basically what we have is we've got dietary protein that we break down to give us amino acids, okay? And we also have the sort of normal protein turnover, which I'll abbreviate here as NPT, where we're gonna take cellular protein and break it down into the amino acids. And some of those amino acids will be recycled to build other cellular proteins. But the point is that we're going to generate amino acids from breaking down proteins. And this collection of amino acids that we get is called the amino acid pool or a pool of amino acids. It's a pool that we can uh, use, take, take amino acids from. So these amino acids are useful for two reasons. One, they are a nitrogen source. And two, they give us carbon skeletons. So the amino acids, if we shoot over here to the left, we've got um, the reduced usable form of nitrogen that is ammonia or ammonium ion. And that can be used for the biosynthesis of nitrogen containing compounds because we need to have that nitrogen available to build compounds that contain nitrogen in them. And so this could be used to build other amino acids, but it can also be used to build nucleotides, which of course have nitrogen in them. Among other things, right? There could be other things that are nitrogen containing compounds, but those are two big ideas there. Um, if the requirement for the biosynthesis of the nitrogen containing compounds is exceeded by the amount of uh, a nitrogen, if there's basically if there's more nitrogen than we need to build these compounds, um, that's bad because there's an excess, an excess of the ammonium ion is toxic. So that ammonium ion will have to be um, sort of packaged in carbamyl phosphate, which can go through the urea cycle 
to eventually be safely excreted as urea. Okay. So that part of the amino acid is taken care of. But then what happens to the, the portion that has all the carbons in it? Um, well, what we get here is the alpha keto acids or the carbon skeletons. And the reason they're called alpha keto acids is because this is the alpha carbon in the amino acid. And this is the alpha carbon here. The alpha carbon here is a ketone and it's alpha keto acid. Basically, though, the carbon skeleton is just the portion of the amino acid that's everything but the amino group, right? So um, this is the part that can actually be catabolized for energy. Right? The, what Basically, what happens is that the carbon skeleton, one way or another, feeds its way into the Krebs cycle. And if you recall, with the Krebs cycle, we get a bunch of NADHs, FADH2s, GTPs. So if these carbon skeletons basically find their way to becoming intermediate of the Krebs cycle, and they could be oxidized completely to carbon dioxide and, of course, give us a bunch of energy. So that's kind of what we'll be exploring. Anyway, I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.